but that's not, they're, they're all shockingly similar. Yeah. <laughs> You're not getting any hard questions. Everybody was almost ready to go. Take a deep breath. Um, yes. Yes. No, that's, I mean, as ready as I'll ever be. So, yeah, looking forward to it. You, Thank you. You look like you're fully ready. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Again. I should have worn my blue suit jacket today. <laughs> Good to go? Oh. All, right. All right. Good morning, everybody. I'm Mike Paparian with Solar Cookers International. This is our uh, press conference to talk about solar cooking. Um, we're here at COP25 in Madrid, Spain, uh, connecting solar cooking, greenhouse gas, and black carbon reduction, and the need for countries to include cooking in their national plans to address climate change. With me today are Caitlin Hughes, Executive Director of Solar Cookers International, Dr. Alan Bigelow, Science Director of Solar Cookers International, and Matthew Phillip, uh, Team Lead, Global Climate Action at the UN Climate Change Secretariat. So let's start with um, Alan. What is a solar cooker? Very simply, a solar cooker is a device that can cook food just by capturing direct sunlight. There's a lot of power with the sun, so by collecting sun rays and absorbing them in black cookware, one is able to maintain and will achieve the temperatures required for cooking. There are three basic types of solar cookers pictured here on the slide. You can see examples of the reflective panel cooker, a box oven cooker, and a parabolic cooker. There are many more versions of these examples, and they can all function when there is sunlight. And this is what we call a, an example of solar thermal cooking. Other versions such as the one shown here, is an example of how you can scale solar cooking for cooking more meals. Systems such as this, these are based on large Scheffler dishes, can actually cook for thousands of meals per day. And we have many examples in India, for instance, that show this capacity. Again, a solar cooker functions very simply by collecting sunlight, absorbing the, the light on black cookware, retaining heat, this is easy, it's efficient, it's safe and sustainable. Thank you. Now, Caitlin, why, um, why is solar cooking important? There are so many advantages for solar cooking. First of all, there are no fuel costs because solar cooking only relies on the power of the sun. There's no firewood, no charcoal, no electricity, no plugs. It's just the power of the sun converted to thermal energy to cook. Because of that, there's also zero air pollution and zero carbon dioxide emissions. So it's a really important solution to both mitigate and adapt to climate change. There's zero smoke produced, so there's incredible health benefits in addition to the environmental benefits, especially for the women and children who often are the ones shouldered with the burden of responsibility for cooking. In fact, cooking over an open fire is similar to smoking 400 cigarettes an hour which is obviously very harmful to people's health. With cooking with the solar cooker, there's none of that. So it's a great solution. Solar cooking also reduces deforestation. A very simple solar cooker can save a family one ton of wood in one year. So think about the impacts of that. If all, almost half the world of the people who are cooking over open fires converted to using solar cooking. There'd be huge benefits in terms of reducing carbon dioxide emissions and reducing deforestation. Also with solar cooking, people can have more nutritious meals because they're spending less of their income on ongoing fuel costs. The sun is free, so there's no ongoing fuel costs and people can put that additional income towards healthcare, towards school, towards anything else that themselves or their family needs. Solar cooking can also be used for solar drying, which increases food security. 
And also, if women and children don't need to go out and collect fuel, it reduces their risk to environmental risk, it induce, reduces their risk to environmental factors, and also gender-based violence. Also, solar cooking can be used to heat water in order to make it safe to drink. So it also reduces waterborne diseases in addition to respiratory diseases. It's very cost effective. There are simple models that can be made for probably less than a dollar. And it requires no infrastructure. You don't need to build a dam or power lines. Solar cooking is something that everyone can implement today. It's a beautiful solution. It's the people solution. It makes energy accessible to everyone. Solar Cookers International is the nonprofit that leads the solar cooking sector. And through that, we've been able to gather data on the positive impacts of solar cooking worldwide. In fact, we've been able to identify over 3.7 million solar cookers worldwide. And we have a map of this on our website solarcookers.org. It's interactive, you can go there, you can see how many cookers in which country and which type. We know that these 3.7 million solar cookers have positively impacted over 13.4 million people directly, but obviously solar cooking benefits all of us around the world every day. We also estimate that over 7 billion, with a B, meals have been cooked using solar thermal technology. They've reduced carbon dioxide emissions by an estimated 27 million tons. And in addition to the huge health and environmental benefits, there's huge economic benefits as well. Some families will spend up to 40% of their income on fuel. With solar cooking, they're saving all of that. Also, there's huge economic benefits on the country level. If people are not getting sick from breathing in household air pollution, then that's more time that they can spend working and contributing to their country's economy. So it does benefit us all in multiple ways. So what else can you tell us about Solar Cookers International and the work that you do as executive director? Solar Cookers International has been around since 1987. As I said, we're the nonprofit leading the solar cooking sector. We're based in the United States, and we have collaborators in over 135 different countries. Our mission is to improve human and environmental health with solar cooking. We do this through three main areas, advocacy, research, and building capacity. And we're gonna tell you more about those. So Alan, uh, you just got back from Kenya where you were working with local communities on solar cooking. Can you help make this real for us? How is solar cooking helping at the individual level? Okay. Solar Cookers International works with collaborators. In Kenya, we have a collaborator called Ecomandate Foundation, which has recently been making their own solar cookers locally in Kenya using materials that are available locally. This is a wonderful solution for propagating this climate solution through solar cooking. By using local resources, the cost can be kept low and af affordable, and hence this also allows the solar cooker to be accessible to the local communities. Ecomandate Foundation has primarily been interested in bringing the solution to Kakuma refugee camp in Kenya. This is in northern Kenya, and the picture that you see here is actually from the camp. And in northern Kenya, the, the region is extremely barren, dry, it's a harsh environment. In this picture, you see a typical scene of the market for firewood and charcoal that's in the camp. And the few trees that you see here are shade trees that are preserved for that purpose in the camp. But beyond the camp, it's an extremely barren area where fuel wood is, is uh, hard to access. So the solution with solar cooking will help relieve tensions between the local community and the refugee community when refugees are actually looking to access more wood. It's a very limited supply, hence the market scene that you see here. Uh, the next slide. This is an, a picture from in uh, Kakuma refugee camp, and this is a picture of the Heliac solar cooker. Uh, 
This is one of the types of solar cookers that EcoMandate is building. And in this cooker, the light is concentrated af after it passes through a Fresnel lens. That's a flexible Fresnel lens. And the light then, as it's concentrating, reflects off of a lower mirror and then back up to a cooking surface. So it's very uh, accessible to the women and, and young women, young girls who are using this system. The cooking pot, the bottom of it, has a black coating, which is very good for absorbing the sunlight and converting the energy of light directly to heat energy. On the next picture, you'll see Jacqueline Hararimana. She is a refugee from South Sudan living in the camp. And this is, uh, I think, w about six months now that she's been using this cooker. She's become an expert solar cook and is able to feed her family. She's a single mother, a single woman, but she has several children. And she's now able to cook with a sustainable way. And this is a great savings for her in terms of her time and, uh, and money that she might have to spend on cooking fuel because there is not enough cooking fuel provided by, by the uh, relief agencies that are, are, are there at the camp. On the next slide, we see the children from her compound and, and neighbors who uh, are now able to enjoy meals prepared in a clean and sustainable way through solar cooking. Really thanks to EcoMandate and their efforts to bring solar cooking to Kakuma. And I have to give thanks to the supporters of Solar Cookers International because without their support, SCI would not be able to then empower our local collaborators with uh, resources. Thank you, Alan. Now, Caitlin, uh, tell us about SCI's advocacy work. Yes, Solar Cookers International works to advocate for solar cooking at forums like the High Level Political Forum in New York, where government leaders come to talk about progress on the Sustainable Development Goals. It's so incredibly important that Solar Cookers International is there and a part of the conversation because solar cooking positively impacts all 17 Sustainable Development Goals. Not only have we been there, we've also brought our global advisors, our volunteers there to share their voice about how important solar cooking is in their particular regions and across the world. And Solar Cookers International is here at COP, at the United Nations Climate Conference, advocating for solar cooking as a solution because it does have such positive impacts for our environment as well. We're encouraging countries to include solar cooking as a part of their nationally determined contributions. This is each country's plan to address climate change. So we'd like to positively recognize the country of Somalia because they've already included solar cooking in their plan to address climate change. As you can see, there's lots of opportunity as awareness is increasing about the impacts of cooking on our planet and our people and the opportunity for solar cooking as an ideal solution. Now, Alan, uh, SCI research, what goes on there? On the research side, SCI is focusing on testing products. The solar cooking sector has not had an internationally agreed upon standard for how to test solar cookers and evaluate their cooking power. But recently, meaning that during the past two years, standards have been produced by the International Organization for Standardizations with protocols for how to test clean cook stoves, which include solar cookers, uh, for their performance, for their durability, for their safety, for their usability. So SCI, as a nonprofit organization, where we do not manufacture solar cookers, hence we have a very neutral stance, and we can provide a testing service without a perceived conflict of interest. We've developed instrumentation, pictured here, that can be used for measuring the standard cooking power of a solar cooker. The instrumentation has an anemometer, a pyranometer. For the pyranometer measures the, the solar irradiance during the test, and it has thermocouple sensors for measuring temperature of the water and the, and the ambient. On the next slide, you'll see the locations where we are uh, bringing this capacity for testing. This was at uh, a, the debut at a conference in India. On the next slide, you will see the four locations where SCI now has testing capacity. 
California, New York, Nepal, and most recently at the University of Nairobi in Kenya. Since this is a new program, we are just getting started, but on the next slide you will see seven solar cookers that have now been either tested or they have been committed for testing, meaning that the manufacturer has paid the testing fee. And the results of these solar cookers, the um, the standardized cooking power, the results are being posted on our website, www.solarcookers.org. Great. Now, Caitlin, SCI builds capacity in the solar cooking sector. How does it do that? There's many different ways that Solar Cookers International works to build capacity. As I mentioned before, we have hundreds of collaborators in over 135 countries, and we are working to scale up and address a challenge that affects almost half of our world. And so that's why building capacity of our collaborators is so important. Solar Cookers International creates forums for all of our collaborators to share their expertise and their lessons learned in addition to ours with our over 30 years of experience. We do this through many formats, one of which is the world's largest online database of solar cooking information, the Solar Cooking Wiki. Anyone can access it at any time at solar cooking.org. So we have two websites, solarcookers.org and solarcooking.org. The beautiful thing about the Solar Cooking Wiki is that it automatically translates into, over thir into 37 different languages, making it accessible to our collaborators all around the world. It has over 1,800 pages of information specific to a given country. So you can see what's going on in Argentina or Zimbabwe. There's also plans, so you can see how to make your own solar cooker for yourself, your family, and your community. There's also information on our manufacturers, so if you're looking to buy a solar cooker, you can see what your options are and how to go about that. Solar Cookers International also leads and builds capacity through data gathering and analysis. For example, we created the Solar Cooking Adoption and Impact Survey so that we have a standardized way to gather and assess this information on the impacts of solar cooking so that when we're communicating with government leaders, we're able to share with real data what these impacts are from use. We also work to build capacity by scaling up the sector through sustainable social entrepreneurship. For example, after our global conference in India, the Muniseva Ashram, we had a workshop on social entrepreneurship. So we brought in experts as well as our various manufacturers and had training on that. We also provide these training opportunities through webinars through the Solar Cookers International Association. Highlighted here is Togo Tile uh, and their successful entrepreneurship in Africa with solar cooking. So uh, Matthew Phillips, thank you again for joining us. I wonder if you could uh, describe your role and why addressing climate change is important to you. Thank you. Um, firstly, a uh, huge thanks to Alan and Caitlin for inviting the Secretariat here for this press conference. Um, so my role within the Secretariat is I'm a team lead within our Global Climate Action team. Um, the Global Climate Action team is a relatively new one within the Secretariat. It was born um, out of the Paris negotiations uh, when it was really understood by the Secretariat and indeed by the world um, that in order to get climate change and addressing climate change done, we needed not just governments and the international national climate process, but also all actors working in harmony. So our role is to act between the intergovernmental process and the outside world and try to bring those encouraging solutions such as Solar uh, Cookers International into the mix to hopefully drive governments and spur greater national ambition. So uh, from your perspective, why is solar cooking important in um, addressing climate change? Yes, well, I, I think a lot of this has been uh, obviously expressed um, already by Caitlin and Alan, but from a secretariat perspective, and, and to be brief, um, obviously we recognize the co-benefits of um, solar cooking, such as poverty alleviation, uh, equitable access to energy, improved health, obviously due to uh, decreased air pollution. Um, we also um, understand that it promotes gender equality um, and equally stimulates economic activity. Um, and finally, just a point that it also reduces uh, local environmental degradation. So um, I think good news uh, all round. 
Great. And then how, how do you think it would fit in with the, you described the SDGs just briefly there, but how do you think it would fit in with the SDG work and the NDC work that's going on within countries? Sure. Well, um, our approach is that we think that the, the NDCs, the nationally determined uh, contributions, basically the, the country plans to address uh, climate change and the SDGs, which is the 2030 agenda, are actually two sides of the same coin. Uh, we, we cannot have the SDGs without acting on climate change first. So uh, we see that 2020 action will actually pave the way towards a successful 2030 agenda. Uh, and just a point uh, on your, to answer your previous question, about why addressing climate change is so important. Um, I would just like to quickly reiterate the science. Obviously, we've had the three IPCC reports, the 1.5, uh, the land report, and the ocean report. And most recently, we had the UNEP uh, gap report, which perhaps provided even more sobering clarifications on just why addressing climate change now uh, is so important. And do you have recommendations? Caitlin described our collaborators around the world. Do you have any recommendations you would give to our collaborators, the people we work with around the world, about how to integrate their work on solar cooking with the SDG, NDC, or other climate change activities? Sure. I mean, just two very um, broad points that I, I think are useful to, to land here. The first is, obviously, um, solutions like this um, are excellent because they are co-benefits, obviously, alongside climate change. They allow um, the people driving those solutions to not talk about climate change, which often to the ordinary person on the street can seem like an overwhelming problem. But when you talk about poverty alleviation, when you talk about air pollution, it suddenly makes sense at a human level. And so we would very much encourage the collaborators to talk about those human impacts rather than, obviously, these overarching, overwhelming climate impacts that can be quite difficult uh, to comprehend. Um, the, the second point I would make is obviously reflecting on the team that I represent, which is Global Climate Action. It, its fundamental principle is built around collaboration. We want to obviously bring in the solutions that are cross-sector and also kind of cross-continental into the intergovernmental process. We want to pair unusual voices together. Uh, we think that this will provide the critical cocktail that will allow us to hopefully um, act on climate change. So the final point would just be around uh, an encouragement to continue to radically collaborate. All right. Thank you. Anything else you'd like to add about solar cooking or the work that you do? Or, or That's all from my side. Thank you. Yeah, mm -hmm. thank you very much. Um, so, uh, uh, Caitlin, we've talked a lot about solar cooking, about things, uh, uh, the importance of solar cooking, how it works in the world. Um, how can people engage with Solar Cookers International and the solar cooking movement and, and take the action steps necessary that we've talked about to integrate solar cooking into NDCs, SDGs, and other work? There are so many different ways to engage with Solar Cookers International, so we encourage you to collaborate with us along that same theme. One of the ways is through consultation. As I mentioned, Solar Cookers International has over 30 years of experience in many different geographic contexts. So we are happy to work with you in terms of project design, solar cooker selection, connection with our vast network of collaborators, data analysis, project evaluation, solar radiation analysis. So please contact us to learn more about these services that we're happy to offer. There's many additional ways to engage with Solar Cookers International. Please access our resources. As I mentioned, we have the world's largest online database of solar cooking information, solarcooking.org. Please connect with our collaborators. We strongly encourage local production of solar cookers because that is a key to reaching that scale to address half of our population, approximately, who's still cooking over open fires. We have an incredible network, each with their area of expertise, that knows how to cook local foods using local materials and solar cooking. We welcome you to join the Solar Cookers International Association. This is primarily designed for our high-impact partners, with additional recognition, publicity, and access to resources. Sign up for more information. We send regular updates through email and social media, and we want you to stay informed about what we're doing so that you can be an advocate with us for solar cooking in your community and in your country. Please include solar cooking in your work. As I mentioned earlier, this is a solution that is accessible to everyone everywhere the sun shines. 
and encourage your country to include solar cooking in its NDCs or its plan to address climate change. If you do have a solar cooker or you're looking at starting an initiative, Solar Cookers International encourages you to use one that's been Solar Cookers International performance evaluation process tested. This is the process that Alan described and is so important for that unbiased scientific approach paired with solar cooking's additional benefits. All right, now we have a few minutes before we have to wrap this up. We wanted to see if there's any questions from anybody about the work we do about solar cooking. And uh, if not, I'm gonna ask Alan, uh, oh, there is a question in the back there, thank you. Do you have some experience in some countries in Latin America? Can you uh, give uh, some experience in that countries? Yes, we have lots of experience with collaborators in Latin America. Thank you for asking. Uh, some examples of which are we have collaborators who have opened solar cooking restaurants, which is a great way to showcase the benefits of solar cooking, educate communities about it, as well as generate additional income. Uh, for example, one of our earlier slides uh, showed a woman who had started her own solar cooking restaurant and was hence able to provide for her family uh, some critical support that, that really helped multiple generations. Um, another benefit that Solar Cookers International has provided to our Latin American collaborators is bringing them to this conference in India that we hosted. So they were not only able to share their expertise, but also see some of the examples of that institutional scale solar cooking that we've mentioned. Uh, we also have collaborators, for example, in Mexico who are using solar drying to add value to products. Uh, for example, solar drying cheese in Chiapas, Mexico. Um, so that's an additional way to supplement income and utilize the benefits of solar cooking. There are so many more examples. I encourage you to go to solarcooking.org to learn more. All right, any other questions? So a a Alan and then Caitlin, what are your favorite things to solar cook? What do you, what do you enjoy eating out of your solar cook, cooking uh, equipment? Yeah, I, I've taken on solar cooking for the past 11 years personally. And my personal goal is to basically cook everything that I would indoors, that I could also cook that outside with the sun using solar cookers. And there's been very few things that I haven't been able to cook. <laughs> uh, a lot of success, and I think that the favorite thing is something that I've learned how to cook just during the past year, and I'll call that Rose's Solar Cake. And this is a tribute to a woman named Rose Bazil from Haiti, and she is one of our global advisors, and or she's an associate member. Um, at Solar Cookers International, and she's a real dynamo in that she is promoting solar cooking in Haiti, which is a country that has very, uh, well, has a lot of challenges for access to fuel for cooking, and given her energy level to bring solar cooking solutions to the communities, at the community level, she loves to introduce this through cake. <laughs> so I've learned how to make her cake, and it's delicious, um, that's one of my new solar favorite meals. All right, we look forward to tasting that sometime. Caitlin, what do you like to cook? Uh, so many different things. One of the easiest is corn on the cob. Leave it in the leave it in the husk, toss it in the solar cooker. I actually do it while I'm working, so I'll put the solar cooker out, put the put the corn or whatever I'm eating for lunch, go back to work, keep working. So it's actually a really efficient use of time. I've also solar cooked lasagna, enchiladas, quiche, veggie pot pie, eggs. Brownies, cookies, again, pretty much everything that you would cook otherwise, you can also cook in a solar cooker, and it's a lot of fun. And I'll just add that my, my favorite dish that I cook, I make a mean ratatouille, a vegetable stew. Uh, cooks wonderfully uh, throughout the day, the flavors mix, and it's just uh, delicious. So hopefully you can come to my place and enjoy my ratatouille sometime. Um, I think we're out of time. Uh, any last things you'd like to add? Any more minutes? Um, yeah. Alan or Caitlin or uh, one Matthew? One oh, here's a question. The oh, we have one more question. Go ahead. Um, please, arrive. I'm from DRC. I would like to know how much costs a cooker, a gas, a solar cooker? Yes. The cost um, of the thing. Yes. How, long, how much does a solar cooker cost? 
Well, the, the costs range from several hundred U.S. dollars on down to almost free if you can make it yourself using materials that you have available. We have open source design plans on our website, or I should say on our websites, we have solarcookers.org and solarcooking.org, which is a wiki environment that has over 1,800 pages of information, including country-specific information and open source design plans. So please go and use those resources. They're freely available, and we find that the local manufacturing is the best way to keep the cost as low as possible, and this brings access of solar cooking to the communities that need this most. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Caitlin. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, Matthew. And thank you, everybody, for joining us.